We are at script number two of our end-to-end -end project of flood mapping. In the previous script, we learned how to take our Sentinel-1 data, apply a whole bunch of filters, and we end up with a before image and an after image. So now that we have an image uh, that is captured before the floods and after the floods, let's first see uh, those image and see how to visualize that. So we are at this point here, we have a before image. And if you just print this before image, you'll see that this image has two bands, the VV band and a VH band. So you could select one of the bands, add it to the map, and you'll see some data. And this is a VV, VH bands uh, just have uh, values, uh, you know, like, you know, from minus 30 to uh, positive something, and you can just visualize that. And the, the lower backscatter value uh, means that, you know, less amount of radiation uh, came back. So we can use that to visualize, you'll get some information. But as we learned in the intro presentation, that there's a better way to visualize this data where you can create an RGB composite. So we can create a three band composite and visualize this data and in its full detail. So we have two bands already. And for RGB composite, we need the third band. And the third band is going to be the ratio of VV and VH. And this is also a very important signal. The ratio of VV VH is actually correlates quite well with NDVI uh, or the vegetation and also gives you much uh, useful information that can highlight the structure of the image. So let's see how to add this image. And since we want to add this to uh, this band to both before and after, I'll just write a function that takes an image and returns an image with the third band. So I'll write a function saying that add ratio band and this function takes an image and this image would have the VV and VH band. So we'll just say, uh, we'll create a ratio band, say, take the image, select VV and divide it by image.select VH. And now we have the VV and VH ratio. Uh, we can just name it properly so that we can identify those easily in our a data set, we can just rename it VV slash VH. So this is the VV ratio. And then we can return the original image with the uh, ratio band added. That is done using the add bands function. Okay, so now we have this function. We'll just apply this here. So we can just say before RGB composite would be on my uh, call the function add ratio band on the before image and the after RGB will be the same thing, we'll call this function on my after image. So now we should have a three band image. I'll print this to just verify that I got a three band image. And you should see there's a three bands here. So you have the BV, VH and BV slash VH ratio. So let's just visualize this. Uh, for that, we first need uh, our visualization parameters. And typically when we do this, we'll do uh, min and max. So in the case of SAR data, uh, the negative uh, data contains some negative values. So, and the max value is usually around zero. So we can do something like this, min minus 25 and max zero. So this parameters would work fine for the VV and VH band. But when we take the ratio, the values will become much smaller and they would range from say zero to two. So how do we specify different min max values for the VVVH band and the ratio band? Um, one useful thing uh, Earth Engine provides is that the min and max parameters could be a list of values and this is a per band value. So for this VV and uh, VH band, it could be minus 25 as a min value. For the ratio band, the min value could be zero. And then same for max, we'll keep a list that this would be the zero, zero will be the max value for the VV and VH bands and the two would be the, the max value for the ratio band. And now those pairwise min max will be, value will be applied to each band. So now we are ready to uh, visualize our image. We can say map.add layer and the before RGB image with the this params and we'll name it before. And we can also add the after image. And let's run this, fingers crossed. If there are no errors and we did everything right, we should see a, a visualization of the before and after imagery. Okay. 
And this is our before imaging that's coming in. You can see this is the blue one is the water here. And that's just a permanent water that's around here. You can see as the after image coming in, you, you are able to see clearly which areas are flooded. And this is looks like this is the primarily flooded region. So this is your first view, a look at what the after image look like. And if you're doing that initial assessment, this uh, RGB composite provides you a really useful way to initially estimate and figure out what kind of damage is done. And this is also a great way to uh, validate your data saying that you got the right date range. And if you want to change your date ranges here, you can uh, play around with here and still you are, you can visually verify that this is the result you want. Cool. So now we've got our results visually. Let's now analyze this image and see, extract those pixels which could be flooded and then compute the area. So that's coming up in script number three in the next video.